<laughs> uh, hello everybody, welcome to Let's Make Art. My name is Sarah Cray, I paint things, and you paint along with me, and it's a really great time. Uh, we do watercolor, which might sound scary. It's not, it's just water and color on a piece of paper together in a joyous union. <laughs> <laughs> it's great. It's really wonderful. I mean, the way you describe it is very appealing. <laughs> it's, it's just really amazing. Um, this week we are doing the flamingo. <laughs> do the do the. <sighs> <laughs> so this is just we, really. We just recorded this tutorial again. I did it again. I'm gonna be honest with you guys. I've painted this flamingo so many Show times. The last one you did. You did such a good job. This was the last one from the last tutorial. That's uh, 19 hours. Al forgot to press record on that one. Again. So we're doing this again. <laughs> again. <laughs> but that's okay. It's fine. It's fine. We all make mistakes. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> it's a full-time job. This is we just what we do it. professionally. It's fine. Okay. We have... Two brushes, a round six and a round two. Round six is for our larger areas, big brush strokes, big marks, that's what we're looking for. We have, I think, four colors. Let me make sure. One, two, three, four, four. Magenta, black, leaf green, and dandelion yellow. Those and are they the look four. so good, you guys. You're gonna love these. They're great colors, especially together. <laughs> Let's get started. We're going to do this in five steps. So the very first step is we're going to put in our shadows and we're going to do this quick. So step one to step two is going to be like, wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. Step two, we're going to do the body wash. Birdie wash. <laughs> Birdie wash. Sponsored by Dove. <laughs> it's a wash all over the body of water and paint. You'll see it. You'll see it when we do it. You'll understand. Step <laughs> three. <laughs> step three. We still good? Yeah. Okay, step three, the beak. I feel like one of the flamingo's characteristics that are known. Why are you talking like that? <laughs> I forgot the words. I'm trying to remember the words as I'm saying them. Step three, we're doing the beak. We can even cut out that whole last part that I just said and messed up. Step four, eyeball. That one's also going to go pretty quick. And the very last step is details. The flower crown. I was waiting for Al to say uh, details, details, but he missed his cue. So we're doing details. <laughs> we're doing the flower crown in with the details. The flower crown is 95% of this project. It, it really is. It makes it, you know what I'm saying? It makes this project. Okay. Also, not only is this not the first time I painted it because I literally just painted it, but I used to have an Etsy shop once upon a time where I sold prints and I painted this flamingo. It was famous. It was, it was famous. You probably saw it on Pinterest. I saw uh -huh. a couple people commenting. It's on shirts. T-shirts? T-shirts. Yeah. And just T-shirts. Uh -huh. But they're <laughs> great T-shirts. They're really nice. No much. So, <laughs> so uh, let's get started. Okay. It's on shirts and... <laughs> it's on shirts and just shirts. shirts but they're cute shirts, so. Okay, so for the very first step, which is our shadows, or more like just like the dark valued areas of our flamingo, that's um, like forehead here. You see it on the outline. Basically these areas that are kind of um, circled for you, those are our shadowed areas or darker valued areas. And I'm just gonna grab a bunch of this magenta and just start. So I got my brush damp just with a little water, hit it off the side, and then floating the belly of my brush with paint. And now I'm just gonna start putting this color in. Now remember, with outlines, um, you don't feel like it's a coloring book where you have to stay within the lines, okay? The point for these is just to remind you of where like shadows and highlights and proportions are, but we still wanna blend them out. We still want it to feel natural and not super blocky. So if you go a little bit past the outlines, um, that's okay, don't stress. So here are my kind of shadowed areas. And now, that's, that's step one, you guys, you did it. Smoking. So we're, go we're going. 
Um, now you're just going to rinse your brush and just spread out the color we just laid down. Now you don't want to work the brush back and forth across the shadowed area because that's going to blend it all out. We're basically just like going, like hitting the edges, hitting the edges and just spreading this color around. Like that. So I'm, I'm essentially just using water and I'm just using the color that's already laid down in my shadows to blend out. And we are water and color. We are water and color. That's what we do. Water, color. Okay. I've heard of you. <laughs> now when you get to the top of the head for the flamingo, try and get your wash very, very light because we're actually going to put a floral crown there. And so we want it to be a very, very light pink. We don't want to leave it totally white because um, if there's gaps in, in between your flowers, you can kind of see that. Um, but we don't want it too dark because watercolor is transparent and it's really hard to kind of paint over it. And so we just want it light enough that we can paint florals on top of it, but um, still know that there's an actual head behind the flamingo. You get what I'm saying, right? You know what I'm... <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> I was like, I don't know what's going on, but the record button is hit. So I am, <laughs> my job is done. <laughs> okay, we're, uh, we're cutting back in naturally. <laughs> okay, uh, I'm just gonna kinda blend out this color around the neck just a little bit better. But all of these like super interesting watercolor textures that are kinda happening, I'm getting some strong um, lights and darks areas. This is a beautiful thing about watercolor. So I like to embrace those. I let those go. I let those be. They're pretty cool. I like them. If you don't like them, if you don't like, like the very strong watercolor here, just take your brush that's damp and work it across both lines and you're basically just smearing it out. Who doesn't like that? You know, I don't like to judge, but... Communists. <laughs> I was hoping you would come up with something good right to put in there. That was, that was great. So I'm just kind of smoothing a little, some of this stuff out just a little bit. Okay. And that's it for step two, our body wash. That's it. You guys, you did great. Now we're going to move on to step three, which is the beak. So the bottom part of the beak is black, and then as it goes up, it turns to pink, and then it gets lighter as it goes all the way to the top of the pink. So, top of the beak. <laughs> it's fine, you guys, I'm fine. Okay, so I'm just getting black here on my brush, and um, I'm just going to fill that in. Now I have little lines here, kind of giving you an idea of where the black part is gonna stop. But remember, this is your painting, so maybe you wanna make most of your bleak beak black. That's totally your choice. You got a bleak beak. You got a black, you got a, I can't even see it. Okay, and in between the two, the top and the bottom beak, I'm leaving a thin white line in between. And that's just so people know that those are two separate parts of the beak. Okay, great. Oh, they'll, get it. they'll get it. They'll understand. Oh, I, I missed a step in, in the body wash. We're going back. We're going back for a second, you guys. Rinse your brush. Get rid of that black. I forgot to add my peachy tones in my body wash. So um, on this here, you'll see that we have just little tints of like a warmth peachy color. We're going to put that in really quick. So that's just the magenta mixed with a little bit of the dandelion yellow. So I get this. Sorry, did you say mayenta? Mayenta. Mayenta with, I can't say dandelion yellow, but it's like a soft peach. And then just kind of um, in here, I'm going to just drop in that color. And then down here a little bit too. I always like to put just um, a touch of another color or a, you know, a bright color here or there. Cause one, I like to live on the edge as I always say. I've always heard that. I've always said that. <laughs> and two, I feel like it really just makes the other color pop a little bit more when you have an, something next to it that's a little bit different. And then kind of on the head, I did a little bit, 
of this peachy tone right on the head. Now you can do as much or as little as you want. I just did just a hint, just a hint here and there. But maybe you really love this peachy color and you want to do your whole flamingo in that color, go for it. Seems aggressive. I think it would turn out great. Bold. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's it. Now we can go back. Fast forward to step three, the beak. So that same peachy color we put in our black, now we're gonna put in the pink part on our beak and I used that more um, peachy color for that part. So I'm gonna put that in here and then I'm gonna let it blend in with the black a little bit. See how it's kind of smearing and blending? We want that. We want them to bleed together a little bit because we want the transition to be um, a little bit more natural. So, um, as we get lighter up on this beak, or as we go up higher on this beak, the color is gonna get lighter. So you're just gonna add more water as you get higher up because we want it to be totally white at this top part. So as you're, um, when you put down your first color, just use water to bring that up and just get more water in there to make it lighter. And this area is really nice kind of where it's blending because we don't want it to be like um, like a strong, you know, black outline of where the black part on the no. beak starts. <laughs> Ow. No, no, that would be bad. <laughs> I appreciate it. <laughs> I'm your hype man, Sarah. I, I, you know what? It's great. You come in with those one-liners that really, <laughs> really help me out. <laughs> Communism. Communism. <laughs> okay. That's the bottom part of the beak. Now we're gonna go to the top part of the beak or the left-hand side, and it's that same thing. I'm using this peachy color. I'm gonna put it kinda right in the middle of where we're putting in color. And then we're gonna, it's gonna blend where that black meets it. So you just take water on your brush to blend it, right? Yeah. And if it got too light down there, just drop in some more color on top of it. And then as I go up, so I put my color, I'm gonna rinse my brush, so it's just water. And I'm just gonna use clean water to make that color move to the top part of the beak. And just kinda of work it, work it, until um, it, sorry, Missy Elliott. Wait, that's who sings that, right? I like the way you work it. No diggity. No! What does Missy Elliott sing? We're going to play it in the outro. How about that? <laughs> okay. I don't know if we can do that legally. <laughs> We're going to put some Missy Elliott there. Okay. So, um, that's the most part. <laughs> Let me start over. <laughs> Okay, so that's the majority of the beak. Now, what's left of the beak is just that black thin line. So if your beak is damp enough, which I always use my finger to, te to test it. Um, I don't know if that's the best way to do it. That's what I do. <laughs> that is, that's how I test it. Well, I just feel like if it's not like glary, because you know how wet surfaces are glary, if it's not that, then I'm like, oh, I'm pretty sure you're dry. So I just like test it. So if it's dry, go ahead and do this part. If it's not dry, do not do this part. Press pause and just wait. Okay, I'm gonna take this black line and just follow that mouth line all the way up. Now, when you're doing these thin lines, you want to plant your elbow and not your wrist. So that way you have movement. Because if you planted your wrist, I probably wouldn't have been able to make it all the way to the top. Yeah, you would have made it halfway. Probably not even halfway. So plant your wrist because then you have the whole movement of your arm and really, really light pressure with that thin brush. And that's how you get a thin line. And then what you want to do is you just want to blend out that black line just a little to create a slight shadow on the lower, on the second part of the beak. And that's how we're showing like this one is slightly underneath the top one. 
So I'm just taking a damp brush, so I get my brush wet. I hit it on my paper towel a couple of times, and then I'm just smearing this color just a little bit out like that. And I'm actually gonna hit the bottom part of my beak with another layer of black, just so I know that it's nice and dark. Because sometimes with watercolor, especially when you're blending things, and especially with black, you kind of, um, it's easy to blend out that, that darkness. So we're gonna put that darkness right back in it. There we go. Now it's nice and dark. Okay, that's it for our beak. That's, that's it, that's step three. We are more than halfway done with this painting. I'm sure your flamingo looks awesome. So let's keep on going. Let's. They actually do look pretty cool. They right? look great. Like flamingos. Most animals are so rough. Yeah. Animals are usually rough till the very last step. But flamingos, it's like as soon as you put the pink body in, people are like, oh yeah, that's a flamingo. Mm -hmm. Right? I mean, that's what I think. Okay. So now we're going to do the eyeball, which is step four. So I'm going to keep my round two. I'm going to grab some black and I'm going to outline part of the eye, just the front part of the eye here. So I'm just going to follow that. Now a little pink got into my eye. That's okay. Is that a pink eye joke? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I'm going to say. Yes. Okay, and what I'm probably, what I want to do here is because you can see I kind of, I kind of went, when I was doing my dark shadows, I went a little crazy and my pink kind of got into my eyeball. So I just am gonna reshape my eyeball really quick because what you wanna make sure with this eyeball is that the back part of the eyeball is round. See how that's round right there? Mm -hmm. See how that's round right there? We want to make sure that we keep that round shape at the back part. Now with my pink here, I kind of went right across it and it lost that round shape. So I'm going to put it back in and I'm just going to kind of round out the back part. Now it's going to be a little bit of a smaller eyeball now since um, I'm kind of painting over those lines, but that's okay. The whole point is we just want to make sure that the eyeball looks round. So if you accidentally kind of cut into it, not a big deal, just round it out. And we have to wait for that to dry. Okay, we're back, we're doing the eyeball. <laughs> so I had to wait for mine to dry because the pink would have exploded all over my eyeball if I tried. Wait, are we recording? <laughs> I'm not joking, are we recording? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Just, make, valid question. just making valid sure. Question. So I'm going to do the eyeball. Now you'll notice on the eyeball, I have the pupil of the eye and then I have a little curved section on the top that is for glare. So I'm just going to leave that part white. And the eyeball is like a weird gray green color. I'm not going to lie. Flamingo eyeballs are a little, mm, little <laughs> scary. <laughs> When I was painting this one, I'm like, you know, they're kind of an intense looking bird, but it's okay. It could be an angry eye. So I'm going to mix a little bit of my green with a little bit of black and add water so I get this like gray green color. And then I'm going to put that, I'm going to fill my eyeball with that, avoiding the top part where there's glare. and a little pink blood into it, that's okay. I'm not stressing about it. I'm just gonna lift that out with a damp brush, clean up what pink I can. And then the bottom part of the eyeball, I'm gonna go in with another layer of the same color, but just the bottom part, because even eyeballs have value change within, within them. So the bottom part is gonna be a little bit darker than the top part. And when that dries, I'm gonna put in the pupil. Now you don't wanna put in the pupil while it is wet because then the black will just like go everywhere and turn your entire eyeball black. So just, you I've know. I've always believed that. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Al. Thanks for that. So, <laughs> so just take a second, maybe sing a song or two like She's, Al and I like to do. absolutely right. <laughs> we just sing. 
focus, we're doing the eyeball. We're gonna put in the pupil because now it is definitely dry. And I'm just going to put in that black circle. That's it. Boom. That's the eyeball, you guys. You did it. You got that boom, boom, eye. Yes. Boom, boom, eye. Yep, yep. <laughs> okay, the very last step, we're doing our details, which is essentially our floral crown and some Spoiler black alert. dots. <laughs> Spoiler alert, it's a crown. So when you do your floral crown, one thing you want to keep in mind is you might want to um, like paint right on top of the flamingo where there's just white paper. Don't do that. When you add the flowers and you add the leaves, it has to overlap on the head of the flamingo for it to look like it's actually sitting on it. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yep, thank you, Al. So when you place your first flower, I like to do it like on the top of the head. And then as I make my flower bigger, it's gonna kind of cross over onto the white part. You'll, oh, let me show you. So I'm doing my scribble flower which if you watch Jill the Squirrel tutorial, it's the same thing, which it's essentially just like a scribble. Okay, that's a scribble straight up. And the middle of it, we're gonna leave white. We're not gonna touch it. What I'm gonna do is I'm just going to take a brush that has water on it, and I'm just gonna go along the outside of the flower and do swooping motions. And that color that I initially laid down with my scribble is just going to bleed out. And then you can drop more color in it if you want it to be a little bit um, stronger. Uh, or you can even make your edges like a little bit more flowery so some parts stick out. But watercolor and florals are very forgiving. They work well together, so don't stress. Basically a circular shape is gonna read as a flower. <laughs> it is. <laughs> I've done it before, so don't stress, okay? Or you can do a totally different flower. Maybe you think my scribble flower is trash. If it's a circle shape. It's true, like circle shape with like either a dark center or a light center. People are like, oh, that's a flower. And you're like, yes it is. Okay, for the other flower that I'm gonna do, I'm gonna mix in a little bit more of yellow and get like a peach color. And I'm gonna add a lot of water to it to make it a nice, light, soft, pastel-y color. Is that the right word? Pastel. Pastel. Okay. And then um, the first part of the flower, we're kind of looking at this flower as if it's turning. So the first part is a bottom petal that's kind of like turning away from us. So it's like a bottom part of a lip. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Okay. And then we're going to do the petals coming out around it. So the first petal is coming off to the side. I always like to do like a little triangle. And then I rinse my brush and just use water to spread that petal. And remember, petals are narrow at the bottom where they're meeting at the center, and then they get nice and wide at the top. And then I like to drop in color right where it meets that center, just because color is fun. And it creates value change. You can even drop in a little bit of yellow or maybe a little bit more of a pink color for variation. And I like to just drop it in and let it spread. And you can make it as, as big and as small as you want, whatever you want. I'm gonna do one more scribble. <laughs> Don't do it like this big. You can actually, it's your painting. It's your life. It's your world. Okay, and I'm gonna do another little scribble flower kind of on the back part of this flower that I made. Do a scribble, just take a clean brush and spread that color out a little bit. Now I'm going to do my leaves. Now when you're doing floral crowns or whenever I'm doing a composition like this, I always like to start big and then work my way small. So I did my big flowers, now I'm gonna do some big leaves. So I'm just grabbing green and I'm gonna put a big leaf coming out here. Now when you do leaves, I like to do like a curved line and then another curved line and then just fill it in. I also like it when my leaves have a sharp point. So if you need to go back and re-sharpen your points, um, feel free to do that. Don't think that you can't go back and retouch up some leaves because you absolutely can. Oh, that's bleeding into my flower, but that is okay. 
as you see here, sometimes if things are still wet, they'll kind of like, can they see that even? What am I? It kind of sometimes bleeds and gets a little bit messy, but I think that just adds to it. It makes it your own, it gives it character, and it like kind of celebrates watercolor. So I don't get mad when things like that happen. And now I'm gonna put in some leaves with stems. So you can switch to your round two if this is easier for you, whatever brush is easier for you to work with. I do my leaf, I fill it in, and then I do the stem. Now essentially what you want to do with flower crowns is you're basically just trying to fill up all of the white space that are in between these flowers and around the flowers. If it looks a little bit too sparse, then it might be um, kind of funny looking. So just, that's why I like to do various sizes, a large, medium, and a small, especially in leaves, because that's going to give it a nice full uh, feel. And if you want to switch up the colors a little bit, you can absolutely add a little bit of yellow into this green and you'll get like a softer green. Color variation is always a good idea when you're playing with um, florals and uh, botanicals. <laughs> and uh, what's another word for florals? Botanicals. Great. Nailed it. Okay, I'm going to actually switch to my two because I'm going to start doing some smaller stems. Dangerously. <laughs> Dangerously. <laughs> so I'm just doing basically the same thing that we've been doing, but just smaller. Just some really tiny. You're just like being super light pressure to get these thin lines, thin areas. And if you need to practice on scrap paper that for this part, feel free to. And another good way to add color on the edges of flower crowns or floral pieces is you can do like little buds kind of sticking out from the flowers themselves. And then that way on the perimeter part of the flower crown, we have color. And that way it's not all just um, different shades of green. We can have different things Does going on there. there like that? Well, you're gonna put the buds first, and then you're gonna add stems to them. So you got a little stem, maybe a little leaf. That's brilliant. <laughs> Genius, I tell you. Then I'm going to do a couple, and you can add black to your green to get some darker greens, which is what I'm going to do because I'm actually going to paint on the lower part of the crown, which is on the pink area. And I want it to be seen, so I'm going to do a dark green. A little stem and leaf coming out this way. And over here too. Now if you tried to do like a lime green on top of this, you probably won't be able to see it very well because this is a very strong pink we're painting over. And I'm going to introduce a darker green. It's like an almost black green out on the edges, so then that way it's not only on like the underside of the painting. And you can do a little stem kind of coming in between these two. That looks great. Looks good. Just kind of take a look at it and see if there's any parts that are missing an area. I think I'm going to add one more coming out over here. I knew it. I saw that. You saw it. I was like, it looks a little bare in the front. Honestly, I really feel like there's Good never enough job, leaves. <laughs> Al, you're just being nice to me. <laughs> oh, shit. You never like what I paint. <laughs> okay, and then to finish off our flowers, we're just gonna put a little black center in this peach one over here. 
just a little guy right there. Cute. Okay, now we're just going to do the finishing detail. I have little black dots kind of on the shadowed areas. That was just for fun, just like give it an illustrative element. If you have white, you can use white too, or you can say, I don't like black dashes on my flamingo. That's fine, don't do it. This is your painting. Who invited you, anyway? <laughs> if you don't like it, you can leave. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just picking up some black and I'm just gonna do some, just little thin dashes, just kind of going down. I'm gonna do a little behind the eye. And then a little bit on the forehead. Remember thin lines, soft pressure. It's like I'm barely touching the brush to the paper. We did it. That's it. You guys, excellent job. I can't wait to see how your flamingos turn out. It's, they're so fun, so vibrant. So um, share it, you can post it on Instagram. Our Instagram name is Let's Go Make Art, so you can tag us in it. Uh, if you are not aware, we have a Facebook group where people share their artwork and then like a ton of people comment about how awesome you are and it's great. So share it on Let's Make Art Together, that's our Facebook group. And um, we will paint this live Tuesday night, 7.15 Central Standard Time, so you can Paint this, come with questions, come just to hang out. We have a great time. It's basically like a hangout session with me and Al. Yeah. Who wouldn't want to do that? That's what I want to know. <laughs> We're the cool kids. Okay, and then next week, which is our very first week in October, we are doing... Ba-bam! Apples. Wow. Doesn't fall just remind you of apples? They That's do for me. Both for an apple. <laughs> apple pie. <laughs> That's, the That's the other those three things so this one is super fun the colors are great and uh we will release the tutorial for that i guess i shouldn't say that part we'll, we'll release that the tutorial it's it will happen we will release that tutorial you're gonna love it you're gonna have a great time i think that's all i have to say Right? Yeah. Are we done? Were we recording this time? Yeah. <laughs> Bye, you guys. <laughs>